Hello everybody, back here again for our vlog of day, and today is Friday the 23rd, and today was a lovely, beautiful day to be alive. Got this morning fairly early-ish, not horrible early, but not, didn't sleep in, that's for damn sure. So, <clears throat> got up, got the dogs outside, um, basically cleaned up the little mess for Bruce. Bruce had me out like 5 this morning, and then back again, like 6.15, he wasn't goes up, but... It's 5 45 where most other puppies were up so but i got them all out um got them played with played a lot of fetch with the dogs trying to wear them down um the pointer's just oh they got so much damn energy so went ahead and got that done got bruce back inside got him fed uh, decided i was going to go for my run and get that over with because my cousins are going to be getting off the cruise ship and uh wanted to pick them up and didn't know how late i was going to be hanging around them if they were hanging out here what was going on so didn't know how late it'd be for right back home with everything going on, so I wanted to get my running. So I went and got my running. Everything was fine with the run, and then it started raining, and it rained hard. And then it rained harder, and my plan was to go pick up the struggle bus, which is one of those big giant uh, Mercedes vans with the high top and the I don't know how many rows of seats, a ton of seats, and it whatnot. And I was using that to go down and pick them up because with the basically the four of them plus the two of me and my little Focus didn't leave much room for luggage. It was going to be tight, which Turned out we had enough room, but they would have been stuffed in the back seat, and then we're scooting the front seats up, and it's not comfortable. So, went over, and I went ahead, and I basically cut my run short as hard as running, because I planned to drive the motorcycle over, grabbing the van and heading out. That way, I wouldn't take up a lot of space over there, leaving a vehicle parked in the driveway. And I realized it was raining pretty hard. I didn't want to ride the motorcycle over, so I went right back in that whole thing, what it is. So, I called my wife, and I said, hey. Actually, I texted her, hey, where are you at? She goes, oh. I said, you know, because I was, it was still enough, I didn't think she'd left for work yet. And I turn the corner and I see the car's gone, so I call her and she goes, Oh, I just left. I'm like, Hey, chance of getting right over, drop me out, pick up the bus. And she's 100% set. She goes, Yeah, I can come do that. I'm just right, I'll just go and get you. So I basically go inside, I go get my ID so I can uh, have my driver's license and stuff in case I get pulled over driving the bus. So I run and grab my ID, come back out, wait around a couple moments. I'm like, Oh, I'll just head north because what the hell, it's where she's coming from. So apparently she was already on the other side of 442, which is like a five lane road. and with traffic time morning can really be a pain in the ass. And she didn't tell me that. She said she just left, which I assume meant she just left. Not, I'm on the other side of Indian. So she's way over there. So I'm waiting around for her. Like, oh, God, so now I'm walking up. I'm like heading, I'm running up north, trying to get more miles in and stuff, get my run done. And then I'm like, what the hell? I'm looking around. Like, I text her, I'm like, hey, I'm on Pine. I'm like heading north and stuff. She came down Orange, which isn't a big deal, but it is what it is. So she actually gets like, she's like, where are you at? I'm, like, I'm going north. Like, what the hell? So then by the time it's forever, I'm like, this is way too far. Because by the time she got across traffic, I said, I would have just rode over the motorcycle. It wouldn't have been that big a deal. Like, what the hell? Normally, she tells me when she's heading to work. And I always said, hey, pick me up on the way. This is where I'm at. But it didn't happen. So she grabs me finally. We get picked up. I head over, jump in the van, get it all situated out. And it's pouring down right now. Like, it's just, like, it would have been dangerous to be on the motorcycle with idiots driving on the street. So it's smart for me to be there, but it is what it is. Sit in the van and tons of bells and whistles and warning lights and all kinds of crap on it. That's just, it's awful. Like low tire light and oil pressure needs fuel and additives and chemical and holy crap. So I start taking pictures of all the warning signs to send back like, am I supposed to be driving this thing? Like this thing like safe to drive. And they're like, oh yeah, we know there's a bunch of this stuff and da 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 whatever. I'm like, okay, well, I wanna make sure you guys see every warning light that I see. That way if something else is wrong with it, I won't be like, I want to make sure there's nothing else that you don't know that could then cause damage then blow the motor up or God knows what. So head over and it was low on DAT fluid. And so I basically head over. They said, we got some at the shop. They can pump it in, whatever. So I follow her over to the shop. And we're in that weird time frame of getting down to get my cousin and stuff that I have time, but I don't have all the time in the world. So I don't want to go to the shower and all that. So I'm like, okay, we'll figure this out. So I go over there and then nobody there knows where it's at. I just put it in there like, you'll have enough a quart tank of DAF is we'll get hundreds of miles so i'm like okay so we're low on diesel fuel which i'm going to top that off later no big deal there so it was like below a half so I was like no problem so i take off go back to the house check the air pressures and stuff and tires because the air pressure sensors are all off also so i checked them they're all fine and they're good to go and it is what it is there so from there i went ahead and basically um got back to the house went and got myself a shower got everything ready to go and then headed down south my cousin said they got pushed back on the departure time from the cruise ship i guess there were some delays and whatever and whatnot so we got that done and basically um i saw him as heading that way down so he's all good to go so i went ahead and um as i headed down that way to the canaveral 
how's it going? Went ahead and um, was able to stop in at Lowe's. I had some time to kill. So I stopped in at Lowe's a little bit. So when they're heading off, let me know when they're getting off the jack through security and all that crap. It's going to take a while. So stopped in. They texted their bots for security. They're getting off the ship. I didn't. Which I thought security would take longer. I think the baggage stuff didn't. But pull up into the um, port there. And I'm way over 8.6. Which is what my limit is. So I just parked out the end of the garage. And basically told them to walk towards me. And they came out and hopped in the van. Everybody had a good little hug. Had a little conversation. We head north. I'm like, are we going back to Orlando? Or are we going to my house? Because it's literally an hour drive difference. It's the same distance to my house it is to Orlando from the Canaveral, but we got an hour and 20 minute drive. You know, it's an hour to my house, it's an hour and 20 to Orlando. It's an hour and 20 minutes from my house to Orlando, so you're gaining one extra hour of riding in the car if you want to come to my place. And they said, okay, we're back and forth, they make their mind up. I said, well, then in that case, I'm taking to my house, tell them. So I basically headed up on the way up, we were driving, I decided to take A1A. So we're looking at some intercoastal stuff. I'm kind of looking over and seeing, kind of looking for a spot to spot some dolphins or something, let the kids see, because they've never really seen dolphins like in a cage like in the little bay area like the ports and stuff down in like mexico and whatnot where for 180 bucks you can swim up and pet them kind of thing but not out in the wild doing wild stuff so as soon as i noticed like there's like, some cameras and some scopes and things pointing off to the east i was like yeah no big deal and about it and i drive along a little longer and i'm like there's more cameras and stuff pointing off to the east and i'm like okay else i pull on i felt like a little parking spot here with a little nice dock and i was like yeah it looks like a good spot to look for dolphins so i pull in there and as we're looking around, I'm like, there's got to be a lot, rocket launch or something going on. And sure enough, looked up, and there was. There was a rocket launch going off in 23 minutes from when we pulled in. And 23 minutes would not get me to Manatee Overlook spot, which is where I was going to try and go. Once I heard they said, you know, rocket. But I'm like, hey, this would be good enough. Perfect spot. It was absolutely amazing. So I got to see a rocket go off, just delivering satellites, um, you know, Starlinks. But, hey, you can see a rocket go off. It's not every day you can see it, especially unplanned. And they got scrubbed this morning, got pushed back. So worked out perfect. So while we're waiting the 23 minutes, we see a horseshoe crab underneath the water. We see their stuff, see a couple puffer fish eating the barnacles off the port, off the dock there. Absolutely, I've never seen two puffer fish right here in our waters ever together since I've been here. So that's super cool. Then I see a big old pot of dolphins come up and they're chasing the fish around. It's the baby season, so they're teaching babies how to hunt. So they're schooling the fish up and stuff and chasing the babies around things absolutely having a great time there so got to see some awesome awesome stuff with the dolphins got to see some beautiful um sights and chasing them making the waves and chasing the bait fish around and having all the fun there is in the world for that so that was great rocket flying goes off got to see the rockets all great hopped in the van and we're heading up i'm like okay 15 more minutes out of the way we can go by and possibly see manatee or we can just go straight to the house i'm like Back and forth, couldn't make my mind up. I'm like, okay, then we're going to see Manatee. If you don't make your mind up, so went to the Manatee lookout observation over there, Hall over Canal, and never see Manatee there. I hardly, I literally, the first time I've ever seen Manatee at that spot. If I go in the morning, go in the night, you'll see them all the time, but never from the actual observation deck. I never see them there. So, we pulled in there's always a bunch of foreigners that are tourists and stuff here that apparently must be on a lot of travel lists of places to go. And guess what? One of the guys we saw a couple of dude and his son down there we saw the rocket launch i told him about the deck observation deck for mantis he followed me up told him where to get some food here in new smyrna and whatnot when he got down there but we were chatting a little bit and then fair enough see a little baby mantis saw some other little dolphin and stuff popping around and then saw a couple big bulls come through and a giant cow a huge female come rolling through so i got to see got to see the nose stick out got to see the cool thing there and whatnot so i got to see all that which was awesome had a great time got to show off my cousin her kids and stuff it was absolutely amazing showing her the real Florida, not just Disney World, not just Harry Potter, and absolutely, absolutely amazing. I had a great time. So, yeah, super cool about that. From there, we headed on up, got to the house, and for a while, played with the dogs and stuff, played a lot more fetch the dogs again, got them out, and then my cousin's husband and her kids were out there playing fetch the dog, and really wearing that dog out. The dog got a lot of running in, so showed off a lot of my 3D prints. Uh, went ahead and printed a couple things while they are right there in-house, so I got to see it start to finish kind of thing so it's kind of cool and one of them really wants a printer really bad the other one doesn't um then the, her husband wants a printer really bad to print a bunch of dumb shit and the other kid's like no you don't want the printer and the wife doesn't want the printer because he knows their dad's just gonna just print a bunch of dumb shit and not make it hang of any use so but that's all i'm doing is printing dumb shit nothing of real use but it is what it is there so but yeah we had a good time with it um 
chatted a little bit and stuff. My wife got off work early. She came home, we hung out. We were sitting around just talking and just having a beautiful conversation, which I love. I love conversations. So my wife fell asleep on my lap. <laughs> She's sitting next to me and stuff. Couldn't stay awake. So we chatted a little while, decided they wanted to go eat Chinese. So we headed out and then my wife got a call. She had to run back to work, take care of some stuff. Um, I don't think they realized that she'd pieced out early. But so she ran back by to take care of that in the process. After we left the Chinese restaurant, we were heading back to the stop of the shop, grabbed a bunch of safety glasses, and I gave everybody a tour and basically showed them the five axis router, showed the paint room, showed them all the CNC's, showed them all kinds of really cool stuff, showed them how they vacuum, you know, infuse the parts and stuff and whatnot. And my cousin, I guess, asked my mom's like, does he work here? Like he seems to know all this shit. And my mom's like, no, he just listens when other people talk. When he, some people tells him how this shit works, he listens to it and he knows it. So, but it's kind of cool. Um, the one thing I wasn't, uh, we had a great time. We just had a great time with that. When I finally came out, we finished looking at some of the boats. Um, saw the boat getting built for Jimmy Buffett. They're actually building the boat for Jimmy Buffett, which is kind of cool. So we're getting that whole thing going on there for them, which is always fun. And then basically headed back to the um, house, hung out a little bit, dropped mom off. And then we headed back to Orlando, take them to the hotel and got caught in a massive rainstorm on the way home. Holy crap. It was just, it was hard driving and it sucked. So got back home, kept the van overnight because it was raining so bad it wouldn't mess with it, give it back. But got them off the hotel, they're good to go. And we're gonna go see them tomorrow. And just had a good time. Had a little bit of snack. When I got back, I actually got the dogs back outside. Played a ton of fetch with them again after the trip to Orlando, they were gone. They were alone for three hours or so. But went ahead and gave them a bunch of exercise and then had myself my first cigar of the day, which is super late, like nine o'clock at night, had my first cigar. That's never a thing for me. So. But yeah, knocked out a cigar and then headed in, had some snacks and wrapped it up and called it a night. So that's all I got for right now. We'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Have yourself a safe, wonderful day. Thanks for watching.